Hey everybody, it's Joshua. And I'm Caleb. We know you've been waiting for an update. We want to apologize that it's taken this long. We have been working here in Israel for the past nine days, on average 20 hours a day, mm -hmm. filming these new television series that will be coming out in January. So when this hit this morning for us at 9 a.m., mm -hmm. that y'all guys were eight hours behind us asleep in bed if you're in central time. So right now it's 10.08 p.m., somewhere around there, mm -hmm. about two o'clock in the afternoon central time in America. It's been a very long day. Yeah. This morning, we have footage as we were, as I was recording, uh, my message right in the middle of it as we were standing in front of the second largest mosque in Israel. Missiles started going off, sirens went off as you heard from our first messages. Mm -hmm. From that point, different things began to happen in Israel. First of all, mm -hmm. they shut down the roads so you couldn't drive. Yeah. When the sirens went off, everyone in town was ushered into bunkers. Mm -hmm. Every time the sirens went off, you could step out of the bunkers, but it was back and forth in bunkers all day. Mm -hmm. Then as nighttime began to approach and the severity of this began to rise over by the Gaza Strip, they began to shut down uh, curfew times yeah. for when people had to go. So our Israeli drivers, guide, producers, they all had to leave us. Uh, here at our hotel because if they didn't get home by a certain time, they weren't going to be able to get out again. That's true. So we want to update you with all the current facts. People are asking what's really going on. You can't trust CNN. <laughs> we, this is news on the ground. We're getting from our local sources of what is really going on. And we see real time when the rockets are fired and what's hitting. So uh, we just want you to know rockets are still raining down. Uh, Tel Aviv is being pummeled. They're trying to take out the airport currently, we've heard. People are laying on the tarmacs. Uh, trying to keep from getting hit, and that's that's really one of their focuses right now. We've downloaded a local app on our phone that basically sends you an, a message update every time a missile is launched and where it is launched at or where it's hit. Our phones have been going off like crazy. You can follow these patterns. We're going to try and show you some of these maps on the screen. As they started off on the Gaza Strip and worked their way towards central Israel, uh, towards Tel Aviv and even past Tel Aviv, obviously they want to get to Jerusalem again yeah. as they had missiles earlier. Yeah. The reason they were able to overwhelm the defenses earlier was that they shot so many missiles at the same time that it overwhelmed the Iron Dome. Mm -hmm. It seems like they've got that under control. However, the problem they're having now is Muslims going out and randomly stabbing people, dressing as IDF members, going house yeah. to house, killing people, abducting people. In fact, uh, the locals told us that they have issued uh, several additional units in our area here in Jerusalem of undercover police to try to prevent that from happening because it's such a big deal right now. Well, it's happening because they're dressing up as IDF soldiers. They're knocking on right. doors, pretending to check on people, abducting them and killing them. Um, Currently, right now, our flights are canceled. We can't get out of the country. Uh, they're, we heard word they're going to cut off power in Gaza. They're going to go in and pummel it during the night. Uh, what everybody's so surprised about is Hamas went from, you know, this schoolyard thug terrorist group with poor technology. Now they have pretty advanced technology. We know they're getting it from Iran. We know they're getting this advanced technology, precision missiles. Um, and they had the ability to get out of the Gaza Strip, which blew everybody's minds uh, because the IDF keep good watch over the tunnels. They bomb the tunnels, they close them off, but somehow they got out. We mentioned this earlier, why this is such a big deal because the Gaza Strip has never been breached before. Hmm. This is a huge deal. Again, this is like Washington DC being breached by terrorism and nobody doing anything. Yeah. That happened today for the first time. And because of that, uh, Israel has just released a quote, and I'm going to pull that up right here. Um, oof. You can't read that, can you? I'll read it for you. National Security Minister uh, Ben Gavir declares national civil emergency granting police force significantly enhanced powers. Basically, guys, martial law. 80 Marshall kilometers Law. out from the Gaza Strip in all directions. Specifically saying that the police were allowed to commandeer vehicles yeah. and property of any civilian. They were allowed to use extended force per their own purview. Yeah. And this was going to go on for up to 48 hours. Yeah. Also, the Prime Minister of Defense. Oh, yes. Uh, Gallant, I believe. Gallant said, uh, and do you have the quote pulled up on your phone? No, I don't. You have it. But he, uh, he basically said, from here on, what they're going to do to the Gaza Strip is going to change 
the, the whole landscape of how Gaza looks and how it operates for the next 50 years. The way everything has been is about to change and is never going to return to that way ever again. Current stats that we're hearing right now are 1,200 wounded, 150 killed on the Israeli portion, 230 Palestinians killed, 1,700 Palestinians wounded. Those numbers continue to go up even yes. as we're talking because this will take time for this message to, to hit you guys. Yeah. Um, the locals are freaked out. Just so you know, we talked to all of these locals. We're talking to, to people in our hotel, to the workers. They believe this is the most significant and, and extreme and, and war since the Yom Kippur War. This is, this is big. This is big. For Keep me. in mind, Israel becomes a nation state again in 1948. Yeah. They face a war in 1967 face. to define the borders here in yes. Jerusalem. 1973, Yom Kippur War. And ever since these wars, they're continuing to struggle and fight. Mm. But these significant wars have been big because they've, they've changed the, the way the nation function mm. and they've changed the boundaries of the nation. And so what we're being told by the locals, and you may not hear at home, the emotional status is that they're suspicious, first of all. Mm. Um, Israel is a superpower when it comes to defending itself. Yeah. And they have no idea how it's possible that all of these people got in and committed these atrocities. They don't believe that that's possible. They've never been able to do it before. Mm -hmm. They're curious where it's going next and when Israel is going to attack. So far, all of the attacks that Israel have made against uh, Hamas have been small calculated attacks. Yeah. We think that this is possible because they have captured a lot of high level members of yeah. the Israeli Defense Force in the past. Israel has been very careful about getting back any of its people that are abducted. Even a single person. Single yes. person yeah. before unleashing any massive attack. Yeah. That's possible. Also, we've mentioned previously that they have strategically made attacks at night mm -hmm. for points of confusion and cover yeah. of darkness. All of these are feasible. Truly, in the next 24 hours, everything could change as far as the landscape of what is happening in Israel. But the people yeah. here, they, they don't want this to happen. They're scared. I have been in war situations many times and wanted them to take me. Uh, my uh, audio guy, his um, relatives are out there on the border right now. Some even yeah. taking photos and video and whatnot for us. He wouldn't take me out there. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to see this. It seems somewhat intriguing at times, but these are real people's lives. Uh, we're doing our best to keep y'all guys updated, mm. knowing that uh, we're now uncertain on when we're coming home, what we're going to face, but we do get to come home. Yeah. This is their home here. Yeah. This is what they face on a regular basis. So when we say to pray for Israel, we're talking about a nation the size of New Jersey, not quite, yeah. that is surrounded by other nations who have, since its existence, wished to blow it off the face of the earth. Again, you hear sirens going off right now. Gunfire. Imagine growing up things. and living your entire life in a place of unrest where you didn't know what was going to happen next with your safety, with your belongings, and with your family. That's what's happening again right now. And, and in Israel, it's happening worse than yeah. we've seen it since 1973. But we want to leave you with good news, not just all the bad news. We have been to the bomb shelters and bunkers many times today, and we've been meeting believers believers in Yeshua, Messianic Jews. Uh, one organization, Zion's Gospel, was a group that we met in the bunker. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and filled with faith, not afraid. They started singing, they were praising the Lord, uh, pulled out all their shofars, everybody was blasting shofars. They were declaring the word of the Lord. Uh, no further would the enemy get into the Lord's camp just uh, reading scripture and that's how it's been going all day. Everywhere we go, believers praying, believers encouraging, believers speaking the word and standing in faith, knowing that God will uphold his word. He who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And that is the word for us today. So that's what we want to leave you with is mm. don't take all these numbers and get afraid and woe and doom and gloom, even yeah. though that is what's happening. We want you to take heart. Yeah. We want you to understand that God is still on the throne and that it's our responsibility to fight on behalf of our brothers and sisters here. Mm -hmm. So you fight by prayer. Yes. You don't just say, thank you, God. <laughs> you put some serious time down on the floor because we need it here and the people definitely need it here. Thank you for praying for us, guys. We know you have been since the beginning. We felt your prayers. We've seen countless miracles throughout the shoot and we know we will continue to see more miracles. It's all because of y'all guys. We'll update you as we find out more.